So I wanted to start out by saying that um, this is my experience, and I'm not an expert in any of this. Uh, and I have a feeling there aren't a lot of people that are experts in any of this, because if you search around for you know, Android and data privacy, you don't find an awful lot of hits. I don't think that there are an awful lot of people that care about it, uh, which is depressing. But there you have it. I this just flashing on and off. I'm just going to ignore that for now. Um, so there's probably other ways of accomplishing this, uh, um, and I'm, you know I'm definitely willing to you know listen to any alternate suggestions on this stuff. So this this is how this all started. I had an iPhone for for a long time. I've actually gone through three iPhones. Never really crazy about it. I was never a fanboy. Um, but the thing that held me back from going to an Android phone is that. Um, I, I, you couldn't really sync it very well with a desktop, uh, which is something that you can do on an iPhone. Um, but I found myself not using the iPhone for as many things as I wanted to. Uh, I'm a organization geek, and I like doing a lot of data collection and, and note taking and stuff like that. And I found the keyboard was kind of unusable because I have these monster fingers. Uh, uh, plus, I was getting harassed by the DOE meeting uh, every every time. Uh, it was one more thing that I needed Windows for. Uh, another thing I needed Windows for was um, VPNing into work, and that has also changed. So that's yet one less reason that I needed. Uh, and also, my iPhone would regularly fail on syncing, uh, and I'd have to bring it to the Genius Bar, uh, which was rather annoying. So I started to talk about this. Android devices are designed first and foremost to be data collection devices for Google. I think everybody kind of realizes that. Um, so much of what you do, if you're not trying to counteract that, uh, is stuff that, you know, all your contact information, all your calendar information, uh, you know, everything wants to sync up with Facebook, so your Facebook data leaks out as if that needed help. Um, <coughs> So, but, um, but, but also, you know, even if I wasn't a privacy nut, I feel the contact information in particular is information about other people that I don't feel that I have the right to give out somebody else's contact information. But they're doing it to you and you don't even know it. <laughs> right, right. Because yeah. they have your information and they're doing the same thing. Exactly. But that doesn't make it right for me to right. do the same thing. <clears throat> so, this is a couple of high-level uh, ways that I went about solving the problem. Um, one is, you know, I'm lucky enough to have my own server, servers at home. Uh, so I was looking for solutions that I could sync to my own server as opposed to syncing with Gmail or anything Google or anybody else. Uh, all of these solutions would apply equally well to somebody using some web hosting server somewhere that you trusted to. Uh, but the key thing is you're not syncing your data with some company whose job it is to collect data about people. That's the key. Uh, a lot of it is using cross-platform tools. Uh, some of the cross-platform tools I'm using don't have Linux as one of the platforms, so there's been some not cold posts there, um, but a lot of them are. Uh, but at least being multi-platform meant that uh, quite a few of the things that I ended up using on the Android phone uh, were direct ports over from what I was using on, uh, on the iPhone. And I was able to get the data from one to the other without giving my phone to AT&T, giving both phones to AT&T as they asked, and then having them move the data over and get access to it. Does that make a copy of it? Right. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, so, yeah, that wasn't going to happen. They never got hands on my old phone. I still have it. I could have gotten $100 for it. Um, but for me, having a backup, perfectly working iPhone is better than $100. Um, a lot of applications on both iOS and on Android have built-in web servers that let you uh, connect to them wirelessly and get data on and off. Um, and that's a huge help because it doesn't matter what the client platform is. As long as you can run a web browser on it, uh, you can talk to it from your, your Arduino board or whatever. Uh, and then uh, the last technique is use programs that are usable on your phone. Um, that you don't need to sync with anything else. 
that are just perfectly workable on the phone. So here's some of the limitations uh, that I kind of placed. You have to make hard decisions about what you're going to try to protect against and what not. Because, uh, you know, like with all forms of security, you could draw the line wherever you want and there's always something else there unless you're taking your computer and burying it in concrete. Um, so some data is going to be harder to protect than others. Some data is more important to protect than others. Uh, and you have to own up to the fact that there's a cost involved in time and labor, et cetera, into doing that. Uh, it's also not done when you've set up a Uh, you're also not done when you um, get everything working because uh, every application that you install on Android has its own um, security links <coughs> and strengths and, and permissions that it wants access to. Um, and I, I can talk about that more later. But in short, the, the security lab labels that they have are very, very high level and draconian. Uh, and, you know, so for instance, if a if something is playing music, well, obviously it needs to know if you're on the phone so it could stop playing music if an incoming call comes. Well, the security thing says, well, if it needs to know that, then it needs to know who the incoming call is from and things like that. It gets all the information about the call, and it's an all or nothing thing. Uh, so you have to be careful about what other apps you install. Uh, but the last one is, you know, like, like I was saying with the cartoon in the beginning, uh, I'm, I'm dead set against stealing other people's content. I want everything to work, um, you know, le legally. I don't want to be able, I don't want to do anything illegal in any of this. Uh, one bullet point I didn't list here, which is very important, is I personally made the choice that I did not want to root my device. Everything that I do here uh, is without a rooted device. Uh, because first and foremost, my phone is very important to me as a phone, and I need it to work as a phone. So I didn't want to take any risks of installing alternate ROMs or anything like that. So all of this is can be done with the stock phone. I, I should mention, anybody feel free to stop me at any time and ask questions or um, you know, tell me what your, your favorite phone is. Or Who's your phone carrier? Uh, AT&T. Uh, I went with AT&T in part because um, we already had AT&T. Uh, and we've got the family plan, so it's a lot more complicated to move. Uh, but also, uh, Verizon didn't go for the 32 gig version of the phone, while well, AT&T did. Uh, so it made sense. Plus, I get a discount for it. But I would have gotten that even. Um, I but think you've got AT&T's apps installed on that phone. Right? Yes. Okay. So, so I, I hope everybody's okay with talking about some more general Android issues. I'm fine with it. Um, both Verizon and at and Samsung installed whole pile of applications on there. In fact, they've installed their own UI on there. Uh, this doesn't look like a normal Android phone. Uh, they've got their own shell on it uh, and their own apps, which you cannot uninstall unless you've rooted it. Then AT&T grabs their shovel and piles some more stuff on there that you cannot uninstall. It doesn't even come up as an option to, to uninstall it. Um, and that's kind of unfortunate. But you can not use them. Uh, there's certain applications that I check the permission on uh, the AT&T apps because they have to list permissions just like all the rest. Uh, and I was like, wow, you want a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I simply don't use those applications for the most part. Um, some of them you can't get around. Uh, so for instance, um, So, oh, for anybody who didn't figure it out, this is shh, shh. this is actually my phone here. Um, so they have this AT&T messaging application, um, and there's a, already a built-in messaging application. However, this is the only application that will let you visually go through um, your voicemails and be able to play voicemails. Otherwise, it's you know, press one to do this, press seven to do that, uh, and that wasn't happening. So that's the one concession application I give them. What's AT&T messaging? Right, AT&T messaging is the application. 
because otherwise, otherwise, uh, when you get a voicemail, you have to call the you know whatever number and do the. Uh, no, I, I, and I get too many. Calls. It's well by this thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, <clears throat> but for the most part, I'm not using the AT and T applications. Okay, so covered that. Right. So, um, own cloud is the first solution that I want to talk about. Um, own cloud is this, it kind of crosses boundaries, but it's essentially a group where application um, that has uh, calendaring and file sharing and, let's see, do I have, can I get the browser? Yes. No, that's not the browser. There's the browser and there's own cloud. So, um, own cloud, you can host it on your machine, or it can be, or you can host it elsewhere. It's a dual level where um, you can use it open source, or you can pay to have services on it, uh, pay to you know get get support for it. So I have this obviously running on my server at home. So it has files, but it also has contacts. Eventually. It has uh, calendars, eventually. Hmm. The cool thing is, it's also a CalDAV server and a CardDAV server. And the contacts application in here can sync with a, cal a CardDAV server. The calendar can sync with a CalDAV server. So I have my calendar and my contacts, those are you know patient zero for protecting my data, syncing directly with my server all the time. Um, I can enter events in here, and in fact, we use this as the family calendar. Own Cloud is capable of supporting, um, it's a groupware application, so you can have multiple calendars, and you can share calendars between people. So uh, and we've got these color coding. Um, the, the contacts application is not that wonderful um, because it's designed to be too flexible. Uh, it, basically, it, it, it deals with old metadata, so it doesn't know what fields are going to come in, so it kind of builds up the screen. But it's good enough for being able to do some mass data entry or do some searches. But the, more, the more important thing I want out of it was uh, the ability to automatically sync up with my phone. So everything is always backed up. Is there an agent on your phone for OwnCloud that syncs it? The applications themselves automatically understand it. So I set it up as an account. However, you do have to install. Go ahead. We, we do have to install um, a small hack application to work around a bug in the version of Android that I have. Um, apparently, uh, if you have uh, accounts that uh, aren't from AT&T or, or Google, et cetera, for syncing, when you reboot your phone, it loses those account, the account information, and you have to enter it every time. So this is a tiny little application that just holds on to that information and shoves it back in after you reboot. Um, but the actual syncing is done just with the built-in stuff. So uh, I can show that if you're curious. Uh, I don't know, since I have no control over what version is on here, pretty much. Which version of the phone you have? Uh, that, so this, I'm sorry, I should have started with that. Yeah. I have the Samsung Galaxy X S4. That's four. Uh, wonderful phone. I, in particular, am having problems with it occasionally rebooting um, and occasionally unmounting my SD card. Um, but I haven't really cared enough about that because uh, I'm only using the SD card for some pictures and for music. I have uh, the 32 gig unit and I have a 64 gig card in there uh, because I have a lot of music and I wanted to be able to carry. Yeah, I haven't had either yeah. of those problems. So I've got yeah. the same device. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's something about my phone. I'm not disparaging the phone. I absolutely love it. Do um, those services come uh, with on cloud? Uh, as you do the vanilla installation, or do you need to install additional add-ons, plugins, whatever? Oh, to do the, the card to dab and the No, that's all built in. So, okay, so let me go back to that. I'm okay with how. So, 
If I go to settings. So I guess you got the whole family on Android then? No. Oh, no? Um, my wife and daughter are not using this calendar to oh. sync with their phones. They could because, uh, in theory at least, the iPhone does sync with CalDAV. Oh, okay. Uh, but not, not the CardDAV. Um, but they haven't shown any interest in wanting to do that. So if it's not going to affect the life acceptance factor, why should I put it in? <laughs> so you can see here, this is, I just brought up the setup screen for the calendar application. And you can see it gives you, this is the URL you type in to make it work, which is wonderful. Um, so I wanted to show, uh, while I'm there, I'll look at the CalDAV application. Uh, What's your password? <laughs> yeah, it'll happen. Um, I can see that I'm not going to be able to rely on that that much, but that's okay. Okay, but it actually just synced. See what I'm saying? It just, it just synced right now because I went into it. Um, there's also. So, I'm, what particular app? I didn't notice what app were you syncing there? Well, that's the beauty of it. The built-in contacts application and the built-in calendaring applications sync with CardDAV and CalDAV respectively. So I don't need to install any special software for that. That's the Samsung app or the AT&T app or the I Google think it's app? The st I think Google. that's standard. I think that's standard from Google. Okay. But I wanted to show that there's also an own cloud client application for the phone. Yeah, that was on that last screen. Right. Yeah, it's it's okay as long as it fixes itself in a second, which it's not now. So we'll we'll either put up with it. I'll just move on. Is connection loose or just what? Connection no, it's not. Loose, it's not loose. I think it's just um, okay. it's a pretty funky technology hooking up this to an HDMI. So I think every time it's got a every time it changes, I'm guessing it's like negotiating resolutions. Yeah, there we go. I think so think that the video out is like per application and not just Yeah, player. I don't know. But so um, actually I can show this will be an interesting demo. So here's the root of the list of files that I'm sharing in own cloud. It, yeah. So you get the idea. But um, yeah, so the built in. Is that a synced folder or is it a synced file by file? Or is that whole folder synced? The whole folder syncs, but you can specify any number of folders and you can also specify exclusions. So I had a hell of a time with it before. Um, I told it what JEdit uses for temporary files because every time it was like syncing every couple of seconds until I told it ignore those. Is this bothering? Is this flashing screen bothering <coughs> you? Should I just stop using the phone? Well, it's good it to okay? see it. What you're talking about. Okay, so so we'll go, we'll just go on then. On the other hand, if, if anyone looks at this uh, a few months later on the YouTube, they're not going to see anything that's on right. the screen. Right. Right. But I can't really do anything about. It. Um, I have a webcam, and one of my backup plans was to point a webcam at the phone, um, and it looked really awful. It was very hard to read. Um, so as bad as this is, I think that's a better solution. Uh, if there were anything that was really important to show on the phone, I could switch to that easy enough. Um, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, and certainly, if anybody wanted to see something afterwards, I can do some demo stuff afterwards. Are you on the battery power there? With your phone? On the right phone? Now? Yeah. No. So the adapter that I have here, that's MHL. So there's a thing called MHL, um, which is basically um, the connector on the bottom of this is an 11 pin connector, um, so, which is MHL 2.0 compliant, which allows me to hook it up to HDMI, both audio and video. Um, but the adapter has another socket on it that you have to plug power into. So you have power on that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so my phone is being powered right now. Um, you can see the little lightning bolt on that. Yeah. Um, so I think I talked about some of the other applications. It's plug-in based so that 
Um, there's more applications that I'm not currently using. There's third-party applications for it, et cetera. Um, but it has the base covered. But like I said, the contacts application is not super wonderful looking, although it's got plenty of functionality. Um, the task list application, uh, I'm a huge task list person, and it was nowhere near enough for me. So I have another solution for that, which I'll talk about. Oh. AirDroid. Let's see if I can get AirDroid up. We use MIT or MIT? MIT, right? MIT. MIT. This may be more pain than it's worth to show off. I forgot that I'd have to set all this up. What do you call this? Air what? Air droid? Air droid. A I R D R O I D. Let me switch back to uh, the presentation. So I'll talk about it while it figures out whether it wants to be nice or not. So, Air droids is an attempt to basically bring most of the, a lot of the functionality from your phone onto a web interface. Um, you connect to it over uh, wirelessly uh, with the phone. It, you know, it, it turns itself into a wireless server. Uh, and then, there we go. Okay, this might actually work which would be very cool because it's so impressive looking. Scan QR code. Uh, let's see. So you don't use the Samsung Keys utility? No. <laughs> Have you ever used that? Or? No. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> um, so every solution for syncing directly between your phone and Linux is either buggy or your data goes through somebody else. Samsung Keys is uh, very buggy by all accounts. Uh, buggy enough that I didn't even want to try it because I didn't want to risk trashing the data. And I knew it wouldn't be like an ongoing thing anyway. Uh, and maybe I would have used it. They actually have a separate tool just to get the data over once, which sounded kind of nice because they had a specific thing for iPhone, like you have your data in an iPhone, you want to get it onto this to get it over at once. Okay, this is a beautiful thing. So you can't see the whole screen, but you can get the idea that... Um, so you're accessing the applications from the phone directly to your desktop. Cool. This by itself is not this element. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> that's cool. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of a... That's an awesome feature. Right. But... <coughs> let me close that. Close the camera. So, you can look at files, you can play music, you can look at your pictures, you can open files, you can drag and drop files from your computer onto your phone using this. Um, huh. So that's some of the killer stuff that I, my main use for this in reality is when I'm going through photos, because I could see the photos on the phone and then drag over, I want this one, I want this one, I want that one. Uh, and that's a huge help. But you can even send text messages from here. Uh, it just does this API that does all this stuff uh, straight to your phone. Um, Can you do email on that app or no? Well, this does messages. I don't know about email. Um, I don't know why you're already on your desktop computer. Why well, you want to this is my scenario. You got your phone, has yeah. internet access, your computer doesn't. Ah, okay. You want to go through your, you want to have a nice big screen to work from to go through. Right. Because the provider will not let you share it unless you pay them an extra right. 20 bucks a month. Right. So I'd rather go through this than have a nice bigger screen to work from. Yeah, that's, um, 
maybe there's a there's certain applications. There's a there's a pro version of Android AirDroid which okay. costs more money. Um, maybe that has it. I don't yeah, know. Talk over Bluetooth instead of Wi-Fi. I believe it can. I, I I've never tried that, but I believe that it can. What is the little email icon up at the top? Uh, this. Yeah. That I don't think. That's some messages. That's from your Android. <coughs> yeah. Is that using app? Yeah. Right. right, but this is text messages. And then you have a phone email. up there too. Right. The phone icon. What's that one? Do? Is that just oh, you might call from the dialer. Yeah. Okay. So this is great if you want to do a lot of prank phone calling. You can just. <laughs> copy and paste. Does uh, the screenshot show you the phone screen? Should we be using that instead of? Yeah. So it says, well, let's give that a try. So let's say, I go to. Um, it needs root oh, permission. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think this is one of the things that you need to, you need to, be you need to have root for, uh, okay. which, again, you know, I'm not willing to do for the little bit of extra functionality I get. So, AirDroid is absolutely wonderful. Uh, it works pretty flawlessly. Uh, I find when you're trying to transfer too much, sometimes it times out. Uh, I once tried transferring like 3,000 MP3s with it, and it said, what are you kidding? Um, but it, it did so by just hanging. Uh, but, you know, I can't, sending 3,000 files over wireless to the phone, fine, I, I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, but being able to see the pictures on the phone. Uh, but if you did a direct USB connection, would it work or not? It's not how the application works. It, it only goes through the air. I don't think it does. Okay. Yeah. Is it scriptable? Scriptable? Uh, I don't know. It may be that you can write uh, applications for it. So, so in retrospect, it was a bad idea. I was just tired and cranky, and I wanted to see if that would work. Right. Um, clearly, if I wanted to transfer that many files, doing something like a uh, SFTP or something like that would have been a better solution. Uh, so, so you get the idea with uh, AirDroid. AirDroid, the base thing is free. Uh, again, it's just um, you're just using it over wireless. So, any platform to any platform. So I'm curious the, on the main screen there. You're in a web browser connecting to what URL? What? What web server is it actually talking to? Is it talking to your phone? The application web server? is a web server. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So when you launch the application, it gives you the uh, IP address okay. and Got port it. number to type in. Is it using Java or something? Or it, it must be. I don't, uh, it could be Flex. More likely Java. I don't know. But it's a pretty sweet interface because, like, you bring up. I don't think I set this up to look for a OS paper does. Um, these windows actually move around. It's it, it's built like real like skew morphic. Well, you can sort. You can actually see things better. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. So I'm um, and you can oh, you can share the clipboard between your phone and your desktop. <laughs> so many cool. Things. Okay. <laughs> so much win. AirDroid, very good stuff. Um, so let me exit that. Unless anybody has more questions about it. Okay, great. Uh, and secure. So I expect a lot of arguments about this one, and I'm okay with that. Bring it on. Um, this is the application that I use for storing all my passwords. Uh, I did a bunch of research into you know which ones were recommended, which ones are not, which uh, encryption algorithms were were uh, recommended. Um, I chose mSecure back when I was using my iPhone, and I was using it for, so I, I've been using it for years. Uh, and in fact, I had the same one on uh, the Samsung. One nice thing is, it's got lots of ways of getting the data out. Um, so what I was able to do was, on my iOS phone, email myself an encrypted version of the database open up that email on my phone, tell it to, tell it to open it up with mSecure, type in my password, 
and poof, all my data was there. Um, that was really, really nice. Um, it has lots of different categories of uh, things that you can store information on. Each one has customized forms with the right fields, so it's very useful. You can attach icons to things. Um, you can have it hide things until you click on them so you don't have to worry about shoulder surfing. Uh, it's got password generator if you're the kind of person that wants to use a, a really random password for everything that you do. Um, you can make up your own categories of, uh, of things that you want to store. Uh, there's a desktop version for, for Windows so that you can get to it from Windows. Unfortunately, again, not from Linux. Although I should check out, check it back with them every now and then. So. Um, oh, it also has a built-in browser in it like so many of these applications do. So you can have it autofill fields. Um, is anybody interested in seeing it? Or everybody knows what a password manager looks like? I haven't seen that one. OK. Does M-Secure integrate with various apps that request passwords? No, no, it doesn't. Do you so copy just, and paste it or what? Yeah, you, you can pick a field and tell it copy the contents of that field to the clipboard. Um, Android actually has like a smart clipboard manager like Linux where you can't, you can just, you can copy different things to the clipboard to different clipboards and like it has a history. So it's not like Windows where you've got to keep going back and forth, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. You can copy a bunch of stuff in and go to the other application. Um, so, you know, just to show something that you know, doesn't really matter too much. Um, I've got it configured so that um, it doesn't show you the password protected fields until I tap it. Mm -hmm. um, but those little um, squares on the side, that's... Um, Those are, you press that and it copies to the clipboard. Okay. You're going to do one by a uh, time? The clipboard then? Well, well, yeah. I mean, again, clipboards right. usually hold one thing, but you've got that yeah. history. So if you needed to copy, let's say, a username and a password, you can copy the username and copy the password and just do a kind of RPM style. Go to the other application and then yes. put the clipboard manager restore which one you want. Uh, that's all tied into, at least on Samsung, it's tied into the keyboard. Um, which makes it very nice because that means it works everywhere. And then how do you clear your keyboard? I'm sorry? How do you clear the uh, clipboard? Because once you've got it copied in there, you're using it and you want to clear it. Uh, no, that's not what I want. Oh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I just, what keeps another application being able to grab that information. So personally, I don't use that feature very much, oh, right. but I'm also an awful lot less concerned about that on a phone than I am on a, on a desktop computer. Okay. I don't know that I'd be terribly concerned about that, but 90% of my use cases, I'm looking at my phone for the password and I'm typing it in on my computer. Oh, okay, you're doing that. Mm -hmm. Right, so although if I had AirDroid, I can copy the <laughs> and it to yeah. I suppose. Um, I'm trying to remember now. Uh, no, it's not that. Well, this is a special keyboard anyway. This is a, a Samsung. I, I don't remember how to do that. It's not something that I do a lot. Maybe it's all down there. No. Oh. And there's the clear button to answer that question. Okay. Right. If you trust that. <laughs> Just saying. So it does sync with the desktop with Windows? With Windows desktop, yeah. Um, but um, I find that I'm happy enough. 
again, you know, having the bigger screen and the fantastic keyboard on this thing, I'm very happy to use a lot of applications just on the phone. And as long as I'm backed up, I'm okay. So MSecure has the ability, like I said, to take the encrypted version of the database and email it out or, you know, copy it to somewhere. Uh, and I'm happy just that it's backed up. I uh, don't really feel a strong need. You know, if they had a Windows, uh, a Linux desktop, I would certainly use it and sync to it. But I don't feel any regret over the fact that it's not there. Maybe one day I'll find a better application that uh, I can do that with. But right now, I don't have one. Nobody's going to say anything about 256-bit Blowfish. I'm very surprised. Well, is there a problem with that? No, not at all. It's just when it comes to encryption algorithms, everybody has, you know, N people have N plus 3 opinions. <laughs> yes? How does the self-destruct work? If you enter the wrong password, does it? Yeah. Password? Yeah. If you enter the password wrong a couple of times, uh, that's another thing I've never tried out. <laughs> for obvious Can't reasons. Be yeah, but it's 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 nice to know that stuff like that is there. Um, I'm not terribly worried about it because realistically, somebody getting picked. I'm one of the few people in my office that has a password just to get onto the phone, which I find shocking. That I could just like go to a coworker's phone and say, "Hey, look, you know, do stuff on it." Um, so they first have to get past that before they can even do anything with it. Uh, that's yet another reason, by the way, that I don't store applications or most application data on the SD card. Because otherwise they pop out the SD card and they don't need access to the phone. Um, so I have my music on there and some pictures and some other unimportant data, but that's it. HandyBase. HandyBase is a wonderful, wonderful application. This is like strongly in the camp of applications that I'm just happy to use on the phone, although you can import an exporter. It's really a database application with multiple views, sorting, filtering, um, simple forms, uh, lots of different data types. You can actually do relationships between tables, so you can have lookup fields and, and pull down lists uh, and stuff like that. Um, and, and it's just awesome. I have it. I had it on my uh, Apple phone. I have it. On, I have an old Android uh, Nook tablet um, that I used it for. The first thing that I used it for, and I still use it for the most, is uh, when I'm traveling, I have a packing list in there, and it's got an item and a category and two check marks, one for got it and one for need it. Uh, and when I'm starting to pack, I clear the got it, and I set what I'm going to need for that trip, and then I just go through. Now, since it's got the different views, I have a view with a filter on there that only shows things where um, need it is checked and got it is unchecked. So I have a nice diminishing list as I check things off. And then, you know, when I've got nothing left on that screen, I know I'm happy. Uh, I've got, you know, a movie database in there. They actually have hundreds of databases that you can just download with crazy information in it. Ooh, that's <coughs> nice for us. I'm sorry? The charge much for it? I think that application did cost like 10 bucks or something like that. 10 or 12 bucks for, for that version. Let me see if I can get that to come up on the screen. Uh, you'll enjoy this. Hmm. So when I need to call tech support, and I'm too frustrated to think clearly, I have all the the the, NASA, the, the, the NATO codes there. One too many times. That is one thing that I find frustrating about. Um, yeah, I know. Tell me all about. One thing that uh, I find a little frustrating about um, Android, and maybe it's just the Samsung interface, but you've got the button that goes back. And if you go back too far, the application exits. It's mm -hmm. the same button to exit and to go to the previous screen. So I'm constantly exiting applications uh, instead of. Yeah, but do you still have the home key there where you can hold it down and go back to it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I can, I, you know, I can hold down the home key. And then eventually it brings up the list of, you know, Which most recently right. used applications. Yeah. And nice. Uh, 
it does the right thing if you if you tilt it. I don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> Hmm. So I can pull down different views. I got the needed view, which is what I was talking about. Now there's nothing there because everything was already packed from the last trip. Um, but you can set up all sorts of sorting and filtering. Uh, it's got different record types. The um, when you have multi-selects or, or, or pull-down list of you know picking one thing, uh, like uh, let's say I want to edit that record. Uh, the category is this pull-down. Um, and you can have it automatically build up the list, and you can press here to edit the pop-up. But even while you're entering an item, there's a button that you can press to add something to the list, which is very useful. However, you can also have that list come from another table. So I could have a table of categories and tell it this pull-down list is populated from that table. Um, really powerful, a lot of fun. Um, but did you have to configure it on that, or did you do it on a PC and bring it down to your phone when you're setting this up? Uh, I did it on here. You did it on the phone itself? So. Yeah, because it's, it's just not that hard. Um, so, yeah, so I can click on new database and it'll say, oh, do you want to... My apologies, or maybe I just have to cut it. I can't find the, oh, here we go. This is another application with a built-in web server. Uh, okay. And you're gonna like, <laughs> wait, you're gonna like this. Um, it's got a name? What? Does it have a name? What do you mean? For the server. No, it gives you the IP address and port number. Yeah, but is that from a database product, or is this something else? This is, the this is from program. HandyBase itself. Oh, it is HandyBase. Oh, okay. It's it's so easy to do that a lot of these applications um, do you know how they do it? Like what library they use to provide the web service? No, this is no, I don't know which one they're using. So again, this is my phone transmitting mm -hmm. this. Nice. It's all my list. Hey, look at this. Export a CSV. Nice. Import a CSV. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if I wanted to, I could create the packing list database, put a record in there as an example, and then export it as CSV. Poof, I have an example CSV. I could populate it from some other application on the phone, and then just upload it again. And are you um, exporting that to the phone or to the, uh, the browser-based machine? Where, where does it get stored, the export? Oh, well, let, let's, say, let's say I clicked on uh, let's say I clicked on this right now. Um, this would download to my computer a CSV export of that database. Um, if I click over here, I could type in the database name and a CSV file, and it'll upload that and add that data to the database. Doesn't matter what platform you're on. What's the other icon? You could do this from a Raspberry Pi. What? What's the other icon with Android and uh, the computer? Oh, that's a, if you that? if you were on a, a Windows machine that had HandyBase on it. Oh, it's just a different format for an right? Right. Well, this is the native database format. So let's let, let's say you had HandyBase on your Windows computer, and you wanted to download that database and so use it on your Windows computer. If you modify it, can you re-upload it to the phone, or are they different formats? No, it's the same thing. It's the same you format. Okay. It. And if your database has multiple tables, can you define multiple tables in your database? Well, each database is a table. So oh, it's just yeah. like a single table. I, okay. I know that there's a way to associate the tables with each other to make an application. I've never, I did fool around with like having a, a pick list pull from another thing, but I haven't tried to. Well, that I can work with two windows. Yeah, this one. Form files. Download form files. Um, I don't know. Hmm. I haven't played around with yeah. this. Don't press it for some database, but not for others. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, that's probably one of the databases that I downloaded, as opposed to one that I added myself. 
uh, you know, it comes with a bunch of them. Um, on the application, all these databases are sorted by category, and you get like a file folder category, so you don't just see a, a big collection of them there. Install test pack list. Hmm. So you get the idea for that. Um, again, you know, since it's got the built in web browser, importing and exporting data becomes a non issue. So once you're seeing that list, can you actually drill in and see the data? Well, you can download just, a CSV. Pardon? Oh, you, so you have to export it. You just can't yeah. start using the, you can't start looking at the data. Okay. I don't, I don't think. No, those are only no, two I options. Don't, you don't, don't have. Don't know that I would want okay, to. so it doesn't let you actually see the data itself. Just gives you a summary. Okay. I can use the error guard for that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, I, I know I keep drilling down into this, but it, it's such a big difference to me. The size of the screen difference between this and the uh, and the iPhone was enough that it's just and the keyboard being so much easier to use, um, it was just such a win to be able to use stuff directly on here. And do you pay for this? Is it a, a 4K application? or? CandyBase was, was very cheap. I don't remember how much it was. but. Um. And none of that information, though, is encrypted, right? So the only protection you've got is the password onto your phone? They do actually have encrypted fields and encrypted databases in there. I didn't mention that. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, I don't have any secret information in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I did for a while think about um, using that instead of uh, uh, M M -Secure. M -Secure. Um But I figured that the functionality, having MSecure have the different fields for different kinds of data, it was just too useful to use a purpose-built application. Um, plus, you know, you're only looking at one database at a time, so then you're awkwardly switching back and forth if you're trying to do too much with that. Um, Let's say HTTP, so you have to trust your Wi-Fi uh, network. Well, you know, like I said, you have to. Well, you can actually do it on your Symbian S60, hmm. but they couldn't be bothered with that. Palm OS, nice. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. Right, so you can get an idea of what it looks like there. Um, well, I don't want to spend too much time on that. But, uh, but it, it, it was cheap. I mean, none of the applications, most of the applications that I'm talking about here were free. I think DDH was like $12 or $15 or something like that. It's kind of lost in the noise. For me, it's providing so much functionality that. Um, well, it's of course, you'll talk to PCs. <laughs> yeah. I had one of those too. Uh, I have a. I've, I've been a big fan of portable computing for a very long time, and I have an awful lot of, I actually have a HP 100LX still, which was an MS-DOS based, yeah. you know, with a built-in keyboard and everything. Um, I sent my daughter's birth announcement from the hospital from that by using a 56K modem hooked up to it and plugging it into it. Yeah. Wicked. Well, I just logged into your database. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. You already downloaded this stuff, huh? Yeah. Quick. Uh, Cut it off. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's, don't do stupid stuff. Yeah. You, know. uh, you can, I, I think you can limit the web server. To, but, um, again, it's not something that I've ever been concerned about. I'm not. I'm not doing that in the airports or libraries. So wikis. Um, so the most reliable way to securely sync data is to not securely sync data. Uh, you know, it's like you know, the secure network of the computers, you don't network it. Um, if the data is in only one place, your problem is solved. And as long as you have a device that's usable um, uh, looking at web pages, um, then, then you're golden. So I do an awful lot on wikis. I believe very strongly in FOSS wiki. Um, it's got real actual security model 
Um, and that's something that's missing from almost every wiki out there. Because wikis were designed in the age of data wants to be free, and not in the age of there are 100 million people all over the world that want to hack your data just because they can. Um, so I, ha I had a, a, a wiki installed in my server before that, and somebody somewhere just decided to start filling up pages with random stuff just because they could, for no gain at all. They were just had some little script kitty bot that was. So uh, it's got an amazing number of plugins to do all sorts of crazy stuff. So here what I'm showing is um, all of my bookmarks that I use for everything are on a page on my wiki. So whatever computer I'm on, whatever device I'm on, from my phone, from my work computer, from my home computer, I have my bookmarks with me there. Um, and I do a bunch of other stuff with it, but this is the really cool stuff. Um, so housing it there, I don't have to worry about transferring it. In. It's not there, so it, I don't have to worry about backing it up. Um, I'm definitely willing to spout on about FOSWiki as much as anybody is interested in about that, because um, I really, really love it. Uh, the developers are extremely supportive. Okay, so, so, so do you have that running out on a web server someplace, or is that on your home network? It's with the on my home server. So I, I have two servers at home. Um, one server is running um, mail and web server, and the other one is running Myth TV. So the first one is called Talker, and the other one is called Stalker. Um, and the Stalker one, you can't get to it from the outside, um, because it's not offering any services you can get to from the outside. Uh, but the other one has a web server on it that's um, hosting all that stuff, uh, including the, the, uh, the wiki and, and my personal blog um, uh, and WordPress and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, and running post fix um, and a bunch of other stuff. So do you have a fixed IP address? Or you, uh, and you yeah, I have a Comcast business class uh, because along with the, you know, I don't try to, I try not to do contents and stuff, I want to legally be able to have a static IP address um, so I don't have to worry about, well, it should never change until it does. Um, I didn't want to deal with that, so I got the static IP address. At the time, it was a pretty good deal. Uh, my bandwidth is a lot lower than I could probably do today, but um, it's fast enough for my purposes. So yeah, static one, a single static IP address. I could get more static IP addresses, but I, I just don't need it. Do you find that the, you get a lot of people sort of knocking at your digital door? Uh, Hells yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> my syslog file is just slammed every couple of seconds with somebody trying to hit my box with something. Uh, because it's it's just there, uh, and you know you just deal with it. Um, I used to have, and I'm sure a lot of the you know, members remember yelling at me for this. I used to have the cable modem hooked up to my computer, my server, and my server was the firewall, um, and it, it just put, uh, put a tremendous load on it. With the business class, um, the cable modem has a bunch of firewall stuff on it already. So now I have the cable modem doing firewalling before my computer, which also has some simpler, more smarter um, firewalling too. And of course, routing and doing the, you know, handing out DNS and, and uh, DNS mask and all that other stuff to the, so all the other computers in, the, in my house can get internet access. Is it much more expensive to have a business class uh, plan? It, it's hard to say because it's all package deals. Um, so I have business class TV, whatever that means, uh, and business class phone. Um, the only real pain about it is that the business class and the consumer class act like two completely separate companies. So we keep getting calls from the consumer class saying, hey, change the Comcast. Uh, and they don't realize we already have Comcast. We finally got somebody to put a note in our record saying, by the way, guys, already on board. <laughs> the solution I use is um, I run open VPN on a server outside my house, mm -hmm. and I have a couple of machines inside that act as clients to that. So if I need access to something at home, I can just have an SSH tunnel going through the open VPN connection. So you just have. Um, so, 
uh, nothing exposed uh, right. from the inside of my home network. Except to but that I saw, one. I saw that, uh, right. that one, that one that I Well, maybe, maybe we'll talk about that at some time because I'd love to be able to boost up the security and make some things easier to avoid getting all those hits. Um, but it's also, you know, the web part is public facing, so that I need to have, I need to be able to get to that from the main machine. I've got an SSH client on here, I can SSH to my server at home from here. So, total do, um, this was a big compromise on my part. I could not find a solution that I could host for uh, to-do lists that was strong enough for my needs. Um, so I settled on one that supported uh, encryption. Uh, when you pay a little money for a yearly thing, uh, and I find I find it pretty powerful. The win is that um, there's like eight or twelve different applications that run on Android that will sync with it. So although I don't have the win of that being posted on my server, I have that data automatically synced uh, over an encrypted connection to them. When you say Encrypted, you mean just the in-flight encryption, not encrypted on their disk? Well, obviously there's no way for me to verify, but in theory it's encrypted on their disk too. Okay. Um, so, if you aren't verifying that, you can't assume it. Well, that's what I'm saying. It, you know, I'm not going to drive out to where they are and ask to inspect the hard drive. Do they, the do they have the key or is the key only used on your device? I, I assume the data is encrypted with my login password. I don't know. Again, you know, this is to do information. This isn't, you know, this is where I hid the money. <laughs> so I'm only so concerned. Again, you know, I'm only willing to Some put so much to do information right. is quite sensitive. Right. So, first and foremost, I should have had a slide that says these solutions also may not be suitable for you. <laughs> this is what works for me. Um, the reason I thought about doing this presentation is because there's nothing out there on this stuff. I searched for months trying to find information on people. I even started posting into forums. Hey, what do people do to do this? Cure? And they're like, well, what are you wasting your time with that? I literally had forum posts, people telling me I'm wasting my time trying to put everyone into that. Uh, oh, so I wanted to show. So, um, tons and tons of different ways of categorizing things, searching, sorting. Um, it's got uh, notifications, uh, so I can have alarms go off on my phone uh, with you know soft times and hard times. Uh, I've got things categorized so that um, I have you know a folder for work stuff and a folder. They also have this separate context for. Uh, a separate thing called context, which I could separate things out with that. Um, I, I find it pretty powerful you can print from here. Um, I picked an application that worked for me. Um, <coughs> so it's an app that you installed. Right, so there's an app installed in here, but it's not from Toodledo. There are Again, you know, eight or twelve applications that sync with the Toodledo server. They, it's just one of the features they advertise. So I looked for those and I picked the best one for me for that. Which app did you use? Do you remember? Um, Ultimate To Do List is the name of the application. Um, and again, this has. Uh, wonderful, you know, tags, uh, sorting by status, looking at stuff within particular folders. Um, you know, so I can look at all my work stuff. Uh, you know, filtering and sorting and stuff like that. Uh, it works great for me. Again, it might not work for you. This one's kind of a, a, a cheap shot, but 
Um, long ago, I decided that I didn't want to use iTunes to sync my music uh, because you can't get it out effectively. It's very hard to get it out. And if you even if your phone dies and you want to get to it from someplace else, uh, it can be very hard or impossible to do that. So even when I had my iPhone, uh, I bought unencrypted MP3s from AmazonMP3.com. Huge selection. Um, originally, they had a um, client that worked under Linux that you could use to download a bunch of stuff. Like you buy music and you could just have it download a bunch of files at once. Um, they've since disabled that functionality under Linux. So when you buy music, it's available on the Amazon Cloud, and then you can download it from there, but you have to download it one by one. And that's kind of unfortunate. Um, but fortunately, while I was using uh, my iPhone, um, what I did is I had all my music on an external USB hard drive, even though, so iTunes could see it, but I can unplug it and plug it into something else, and everything had access to the same exact music. Um, so I didn't lose anything when I got rid of iTunes, but except Arctic. Um, so they have an application uh, that works on here. So you can get to get to the same music cloud-based, uh, even if you don't have the music on your phone. So this is like you know music that I bought all the time that's that's uh, that's accessible from. I won't punish you all by playing that's, any of my music. That's accessible anywhere. Right, I can do the same thing on my desktop computer. Okay. Um, I tend not to do that. Um, but the music's up on their cloud. Right. So there's kind of no way of getting around that if you buy MP3s, no matter what, it's on their cloud. You can't download it. You can download it. But you can't download it. But you can't not have it on the cloud. Right. Okay. They used to have a way of doing that where you could you buy stuff and then you can download it. Um, now you can buy stuff and download it, um, it but it's always going to be available yeah. on your cloud. Thank you very much. Hmm. I purposely stayed very far away from any one of the many solutions I could have done hosting that on my computer because I don't ever, ever, ever want to be accused of sharing music, thank you very much, RIAA, because you cannot defend yourself against them, period. So I did not want to host my music on my server. It would have been very easy to do, um, but it's way too risky in this legal environment, so I don't do that. That's only if you're talking about uh, making it accessible outside your house, right? Well, yeah. But if you wanted to get to your music through your phone, you need to get accessible outside the house. Um, as it is, the 64 gig card on, uh, I have in here holds most of my music, but not all of my music. I have about 80 gigs, and that's compressed MP3s. Hardware I.O. So you've already been seeing throughout the night that I've got this wonderful device to be able to look at this on a big screen. Um, so I've got a couple of other hardware solutions that make it easier to do things on the phone. Now, there's only one jack here, so unfortunately I have to unplug this in order to do that. Um, so maybe it's not even worth plugging in and demonstrating unless I hook up the webcam. I don't know how much people care, but it's also getting a little late. Um, so what I might just do is talk about it. Here it is. So I have this little cable. This was like 15 bucks. Um, Hard to find. Not on Amazon.com. Well, that's Amazon. Right there. Yeah. I went to Microsoft and picked mine up. And right. It was hard yeah. to find. Good luck. Yeah, good luck at that. Um, so what this little cable does, this jack, in addition to supporting MHL, also supports something called OTG on the go, um, which means absolutely nothing. But what it really means is it can turn your USB host, uh, your USB client jack in here to a USB host jack, which means almost anything that you can hook up to a USB, any USB device can be hooked up to your phone. So I can hook up this wireless keyboard to my phone. I can use um, my mouse, my regular wireless mouse, hook it up to my phone. It doesn't need drivers or anything. No, no, it just says, hey, I've got a keyboard. Isn't that cool? So it sounds like a whiz-bang thing, 
But if you think about, like, if you're actually trying to edit content on your phone, one of the biggest frustrations is not so much the typing, but the editing afterwards. Having to, like, press your finger over here to move the cursor here, and then doing this to select the stuff. If you have a mouse, you click there, and you drag, yeah. uh, and it works perfectly. So it makes that kind of editing so much faster. Uh, I've also got this keyboard. This is a Bluetooth keyboard, so I don't need any cables at all. This was $21, um, mm -hmm. and it works absolutely perfectly with this. Actually, this I can demonstrate, or should be able to demonstrate, and was able to demonstrate last night. We'll see what happens now. Connected. Yep, there we go. Start typing. It's oh, you're using your keys to move. Um, it does sensible mapping to keys, so uh, you know if you want to go into, if you're in an application you want to exit you press the escape key. Um, the search button actually brings up the, the Google search thing. Uh, you can do the volume, you can change screens and stuff like that. So let's say I went to um, this. You know, it's just like a, a notes application. Um, you know, now I could use my arrow keys and move around and get exactly where I want. It also buys you, there's only a backspace on here, there's no delete. So now mm -hmm. you have a backspace and delete. Yeah. Uh, really, really cool stuff. So you don't have to install anything on the phone? No. The no, I never had to install anything for nice. using this. I plug in a mouse and it worked. I plug in a keyboard. Uh, I saw a, a YouTube video of somebody hooking up a, a, a game controller to it. And the game controller worked. And they actually have games written to the game controller. But if you're just scrolling around, uh, it will kind of works like a mouse. But you can stand there with your game controller. Tiny little screen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, oh, so one thing I wanted to mention briefly, I'm kind of winding winding down here, is before um, I bought this MHL to H, not, I mean before I bought the um, yeah this MHL to, uh, HDMI adapter, um, I bought one that was designed for five pin devices. Um, and it doesn't work on this. If anybody wants it to fool around with it, they're free to have it. What is it? It's a cable set that will allow you, if you've got an MHL 1.0 phone. Uh, is that this? What? I can't see what it's that Samsung is. Galaxy 2, 2, the older one. It should work with this. Yeah. So you can play around with trying to hook it up to your phone. All right. Oh, one cool thing I forgot to mention. Um, with uh, the OTG adapter, it works with removable storage too. Right. So I can hook this up to this, hook up a thumb drive. Uh, I believe a hard drive draws too much power. But uh, I could hook up a thumb drive and the thumb drive just appears in the file explorer. And that's it.